السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته بسم الله والحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وعلى آله وأصحابه أجمعين Although mine is the last lecture for the evening, I see some of the youngsters responding to the salam in such a beautiful, energetic way that it has just energized me, mashallah. So well done, guys. May Allah Almighty bless you all. My brothers, my sisters, many times shaitan makes us become a victim of the squabbles between the scholars. What this means is, you might be listening to someone, you might be benefiting from someone, you might have changed your life because of the effort of someone by the help of Allah. Who is it that guided you? It's Allah. But Allah chooses certain people to guide you, to move you, to make you do things, to help you improve yourself in one way or another, to help you become conscious of Him a little bit more, to help you take the steps in the right direction. And suddenly, whether it's online or just a discussion that you're having with your friends, someone tells you, don't listen to this person. You know what? They're deviant. They're this and they're that. I promise you, it's one of the fitness we are facing today on earth. We face reality. Many of the young people, they are despondent, not because there is no availability of scholars or guidance, but because they don't know who to follow. They have no idea. When they follow one, he says, don't follow the others. When they follow the other ones, they say, don't follow those. When they follow someone, a little while later, there is a breakaway group and they, someone says, but those you were following are wrong and so on. I tell you, there are millions of scholars across the globe. You will never know each one of them personally. You cannot come out and just say, this one's astray because I don't know him. I have no clue who he is. Even those whom we may claim we know, in actual fact, we probably don't know them. Another thing, every single human being will make mistakes, be it myself or anyone else. They will make mistakes. If you pick up this error, alhamdulillah, you don't follow someone in their mistake. But the same person could teach you a lot of goodness. Imam Malik ibn Anas, when he was, and he was known as Imam Udar al-Hijrah, which means the Imam of Medina Munawwara, one of the Imams of the four illustrious schools of thought, he used to say, at the grave of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, مَا مِنْ أَحَدٍ إِلَّا وَيُؤْخَذُ مِنْ كَلَامِهِ وَيُرَدُّ إِلَّا صَاحِبَ هذا الْقَبْرِ Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He used to say, there is no one on earth whom you take everything from. You take some of what they say and you have to leave some of what they say. Besides the one resting in this grave. Who was he talking about? Nabi Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. What does that mean? That means everyone, they will say certain things that are probably wrong or a mistake. You will have to discount some of what they say because they might have made a mistake. There are some people who make more mistakes than the good that they utter. Ah, you need to be careful. There are some people who say much more good than the few mistakes they may have uttered or made. That is normal. That happens to all of us. Don't get caught in the crossfire between people calling each other names, especially when you know that this world, shaitan, exists and his aim is to turn us away. The reason why I say this, obviously the theme is facing reality. Many young boys and girls come up and say, but you know what, I was told by so-and-so that that person is like this and I shouldn't listen to this one and I shouldn't. Well, then who should you listen to? They would rather be in the clubs and the pubs in some cases. They would rather say, you know what, I'm fed up. I don't want to go to the masjid. I don't want to go to the program. I don't want to do this and do that, subhanAllah, because of so much of conflict. But here is a person being taught and reminded about salah and zakah and hajj and truthfulness and reading the Quran and understanding it and attending lessons and durus and trying to expand knowledge and becoming a better person and improving themselves in character and conduct. What else do you want? I mean, that's a stepping stone. Not every school teacher is an expert in every subject. So you will have scholars sometimes who have specialized in kindergarten, kindergarten, which means they would be teaching preschool. Is that an important stage and phase? The answer is yes. When I started off 24 years ago or, or 20 some 23 years ago, I started by teaching children Alif and Ba. 
I was at the madrasa with little children and teaching them how to pronounce the Arabic letters and teaching them how to read Quran. And I was there for a long time. And subhanallah, could anyone say this guy's a deviant because you know what? We don't know this and we don't know that. What don't you know? Subhanallah. And that's how a lot of us have started. And thereafter, perhaps there is a time when you will find some may have the honor of becoming an imam in the masjid. And the others have not had that honor, so they don't have the experience of interacting in that particular way. Some might have traveled to countries and places where the situation is very different. I can tell you something about this country. It is very, very different even from the United States in terms of the way the Muslims are. It is very different even from Australia in terms of the way the Muslims are and many other ways. The same applies if you were to go to Africa. It's very different. We might be speaking on a level that some people would think, what on earth is going on here? Because they haven't experienced anything that you may have experienced. They don't have an environment as challenging as yours. They are not facing some of what you are facing in terms of challenges. And because of this, they won't understand the way some of the scholars might be speaking in your midst. They may not understand it. The same applies if you were to go to Canada or America or South America or Africa, Arabia, the Middle East, the Gulf countries. Every single nation has its own uniqueness. Every part of the world has its own situation. The scholars of that particular place or those who have frequented, those who understand, they would be able to navigate perhaps in a better way than others. May Allah Almighty grant us ease. I'm not discounting people from afar, but I'm only telling you, do you know what? Don't let people who have not been in the shoes of others make you think that everyone else is actually astray and I'm the only one who knows and I am the only one whom you should listen to. The rest of them are after money. The rest of them are after fame and name and power and whatever else. It's not true. That is shaitan perhaps trying to make you take your deen away from you or trying to take your deen away from you. Learn to benefit. You never know. You might, you might be moved by something. Your whole life will change. But once your life changes, you might find that the person whom Allah used to initially change your life was actually a grade one, grade two teacher. And now that you've progressed to grade seven, you cannot only remain with that particular person. You respect them for what they did. They are filling a void perhaps that may not be fulfilled by others. But now that you've progressed to the next level, as you make dua for them, you might benefit from others who are more specialized. That's what it is. I want to join a tahfiz. I'm not going to find the same scholar who might have made me realize what bad I was doing and quit it. By the help of Allah, I'm going to need someone else who is actually specialized in tahfiz, memorization of the Quran, or some other subject. Not everyone is going to address this matter. So I've known of people who say that one is astray because he does not discuss this particular topic. And that man will say, well, I've left it for you guys to talk about. Well, I'm specializing in something. Understand it. Realize it. Perhaps there is benefit in what I'm doing too. So my brothers and sisters, it's important for us to address this matter. Many times people say, oh, that scholar, and it's, a, it's someone you look up to, you respect. They will say, this person said this and this and this. How do you know? Well, because I saw a clip. Okay, you saw the clip. Fair enough. Do you listen to this person? No, I don't listen to them and I don't want you to listen to them. You don't listen. You don't want others to listen and you want to know what they said and what they didn't say. How is that possible? It's not going to happen. If they have clarified something that was not so clear, you don't know because you don't listen and you don't want others to listen. So what has happened to your mind? Subhanallah. You think you're going to suddenly be told by an angel that drops from heaven that you know what? This person's clarified this and this and this, but you don't even listen to them. Subhanallah. So therefore, my beloved brothers and sisters, this deen, this religion, knowledge is extremely important. Yes, you need to know where you're getting it from. You need to know what you are getting from who. But at the same time, what you need to realize is don't allow shaitan to trap you in the process because I have come across a growing number of young boys and girls who are losing it simply because they're fed up. They're fed up with the mudslinging that's happening among the scholars. 
That's why I chose to start this way. My brothers, my sisters, thank Allah. Thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He's given us so much. In our midst, there's so much good. Earlier, we were speaking about turning to Allah, praising Him, asking Allah's guidance, and at the same time, increasing your knowledge, seeking the help of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Look, every one of us has issues and problems. I have matters in my life that are considered hardships, difficulties, challenges. It, without the help of Allah, I'm going nowhere. Allah, I need to call out to Him. I need to seek His help and assistance. And whatever energy and capacity He has given me, I need to utilize it in order to try to solve the problem. What this means is, it's not enough for me to say, Oh Allah, help me through my problem. Oh Allah, help me through my problem. Oh Allah, help me through my problem. And then I go to bed, done, sleeping. Next day, get up in the morning. As soon as you get up, you may have made Salatul Fajr. And after that, oh Allah, help me through my problem. Oh Allah, help me through my problem. All it needed for you to do was to get off your bed, to get to the door, to open the door, to jump into your motor vehicle, to drive to the place, to buy the item and come home and say, oh Allah, I thank you for giving me such a beautiful thing. That's all it was, that was needed. So it's not enough for us to only say that, I rely on Allah and that's it. You need to do something. Allah's given you a capacity. You have a problem. You have a difficulty. You want to marry someone. You want to achieve success in something. You want to open a business. You want your business to be known somewhere. You are going to need to open your mouth respectfully. You're going to need to use the energies Allah's blessed you with in order to do something about it. And Allah will grant you achievement. Reminds me of a guy. They say there were guys who were stuck on an island. Praying, praying that they were saved by Allah. And the helicopter comes and the guys refuse to go on the helicopter. Why? They say, because we're waiting for Allah to send us help. <laughs> but that was Allah who sent you the help. Come on. They discovered you. That's how they came down. Allah will help you using people to get to you because that's how Allah works. He wants one to assist another and to earn a reward because they did it for the sake of Allah. Almighty, do you know the poor people on earth? If Allah wanted, He did not need you and I to give them charities the way we did earlier. He didn't need that. But He wants us to earn a reward to be able to reach out to those who are struggling across the globe. Yet, if He wanted, He could have said, you know what? I'll do it on my own. That's it. I don't need you. Allah's provided for you. He could provide for them in a similar way, in an even better way, in fact. But he wants to test you when I've given you, are you going to give away? Are you going to give away? You know, this world is strange. You come with nothing. You fight for something all your life and you leave with nothing. How's that? How is that? You come with nothing and you fight all your life for to amass things in this world. And then you leave with nothing. Subhanallah. That is this world. That's the reality of the world. Allah is saying, how much you're going to use while you're here? Alhamdulillah. The rest of it, try to be charitable. Give, reach out to others, build your hereafter. Ramadan is around the corner. The other day, I put up a post saying 100 days for Ramadan. How many days for Ramadan now? How many? How many? 82. Subhanallah, I'm not sure myself. But anyway... <laughs> It's less than a hundred. I want to tell you, why did we say a hundred days for Ramadan? To make you prepare for what? For this beautiful season that's about to come. Mashallah, what is it? It's like telling you, and I'm going to give you the example. Black Friday is going to be on that particular date. And you're already talking about it in July. Subhanallah. August. Which month is Black Friday usually? November, right? Don't pretend like you don't know. Come on, guys. <laughs> We know the controversies around all of that, but you, we all make use of, the, of those bargains, don't we? Mashallah. In fact, if you know any, you can message me, inshallah. <laughs> so, I tell you, we start preparing, I need to buy this and this and this. Guys, look out for this. If you find a beautiful steam iron, and let me know if, if it's at half price or less, and inshallah, we're going to do this. So, you're alert, because you know there is a sale happening, and I'm preparing for it in advance. Wallahi, my brothers and sisters, the biggest sale ever to happen is the month of Ramadan. Biggest sale. 
Why? You're going to fast during the day. You're going to stand in ibadah during the night. You're going to soften your heart. You're going to reach out to others in charity. You're going to become a better person. You're going to make resolutions. And Allah gives you this opportunity year after year until the day you die. So the excitement has already started, but we just ended Ramadan now. Do you know what Corona did to us? It actually crumpled time a little bit more because I can't remember what 2020 was like. Do you remember? 2021. Oh. Those two years passed like that. Do you remember the days when I used to come on live on Instagram and catch some of you guys here and there and talk about this and that and, you know, sometimes get a little bit of an attack and sometimes attack back, subhanAllah. Do you remember? Those were the days. But I tell you, it's like it just happened the other day. Wallahi, years have passed. Years have passed. Here is Ramadan. When we were stuck indoors, we were saying, Oh Allah, let us see a Ramadan that is going to be what we are accustomed to. Wallahi, that Ramadan came and another one is about to come. Prepare for it from now. In a bigger way than you would for the sales of the end of the year. The other day, we were in Leicester. As I was coming, long queues at a place called Foss Park, I think. Right? Long queues. Like long queues. I thought there was a light upon light. They said, no, this is darkness upon darkness. <laughs> so, say, what's going on? Say, the darkness of the clouds and the darkness of all these people standing so miserable, hoping that each one makes it before the other. At light upon light, everyone gets the same bargain. But when you come to those, you stand in the long queues. I'm not saying it's wrong. Like I told you, you know of a big bargain. Let me know, inshallah. I'm also part of it. But look at the effort that is being made in order to get something that's going to save you a buck. Do you agree? If I were to tell you tonight that tomorrow the Starbucks is going to be selling their coffee at one-tenth of the price, even if you're not a Starbucks drinker, you might, we might see you there. You know why? You're going to say, hey, at least I can try, see what all this about, you know? I tell you what, they've covered their money already. That's why they're called Starbucks. Yeah? But you would be excited. You want to be a part of this. Wallahi, start preparing for Ramadan by doing what? Right now, say, oh Allah, oh Allah, forgive my shortcomings. I am weak. I'm a human. I've done things that are wrong. I, I know there is a sin. I'm trying to quit. Oh Allah, help me to quit it. I want to quit it. Strengthen me. Help, keep me away from it. Oh Allah, I need to get this done for your sake. Strengthen me so that I can do it for you, oh Allah. I don't want to do it for someone. I want to do it for you, oh Allah. Strengthen me. Help me. Guide me. Pray every day and be serious about it Allah will change your life Allah will change your life don't worry about what people think about you it means nothing when you when you're dressed appropriately they still think bad about you when you're dressed inappropriately they still think bad about you when you're practicing they still think bad about you when you're not practicing they still think bad about you so don't worry about that it's Allah Almighty whom we need to be concerned about when Allah Almighty is pleased with you the whole world can be displeased it's okay are you a clean person you have a good relation with your maker. You pray on time. You are good to others. You respect people. You help whoever is in your way. And you even help those who are not in your way. Today, we were told about people suffering across the globe. And mashallah, lots of people donated lots of money. May Allah accept it from you. At the same time, do you realize what just happened? Allah accepted a pound of yours that you earned working in the way you do work somewhere far across the oceans that pound was actually written for someone in a country like Indonesia where they are struggling for example without something they need so people came to you to tell you about it and all you did was you swiped a card or you wrote something or you filled a little questionnaire or something online and the next thing that sustenance was delivered to whomsoever it was written for in the first place but where was it earned you were sweating. Where were you sweating? At your workplace. You might think, no, I'm a smart earner. I sit at home with my laptop, mashallah. I sit at home with my laptop. One of the women was telling me, that, you know, I just wish I was a laptop. I said, why? Because if my husband treated me the way he treats his laptop, <laughs> we'd have 10 kids by now. 
MashaAllah. May Allah Almighty grant us goodness. Wallahi, the, the reason why I say this is because sometimes we give so much importance to our devices that if we gave a tenth of importance, a tenth of the importance we give our devices to our family members, I think we'd have better homes. I think we'd have better homes. You know, if you just watch, and, and, and I've told some people to do it, and we've done it. You know, you have uh, on your phones, you can actually record something time lapse, okay? You record people on their phones time lapse, right? And you'll see how they smile and laugh and stand and sit and this way and that way and they're laughing and smiling and so on. And then you record them in their homes with their family members. And you know what? It's not that much of smiling. It's not that much of charm. They don't interact. They don't even touch their own spouse. Mashallah, imagine if you were a phone. Subhanallah, every day I'm holding you, hugging you, smiling with you. And you know, subhanallah, may Allah grant us ease. I've actually even seen people kiss their phones. <laughs> so my brothers and sisters, preparing for Ramadan is such that from now we seek the forgiveness of Allah. If you leave tonight, having said, oh Allah, help me through my struggles. Help me become a better person. Oh Allah, I promise that I'm going to try my best to be a person who pleases you more. If you can come with that much of a promise, you've achieved more than anything you can imagine. You move one inch to Allah. You know why? The hadith tells us whoever comes to Allah, a foot, Allah comes to them much more than that. Whoever comes to Allah, a handspan, Allah comes to them a foot. Meaning Allah is always quicker in response to you than your own initial call. Does Allah need you? No, I, we need Allah. My brothers and sisters, happiness, goodness, contentment, true contentment will only come about when you discipline yourselves. Ask those whom when they have a problem, they turn to intoxicants. Ask them if a single one of them has had their problems resolved because of them turning to intoxicants. Not even one. I challenge you. I see someone nodding his head. I hope it means, yes, you're right. <laughs> what else did they turn to? When you've got an issue and a problem, didn't I tell you moments ago, we all have it. That's what this world is all about. I have, you have different levels, different values. Sometimes you see a person smiling, happy, content, and you think Allah has not even tested them. Look at me. I'm tested with everything on earth, but you don't realize if you had to spend a moment with them to hear what they're going through, your problem would be dwarfed by what they're going through. You would be embarrassed to even think you have a problem. But your little issue has actually totally destroyed you. Completely gone. I, I don't even want to pray anymore because you know what? Allah's not favored me, but Allah has favored you. Moments ago, I met a family who lost a, a child. May Allah Almighty grant them sabr jameel. Grant the child a, a, a rank in Jannah waiting for the parents and the family members. And may Allah Almighty make it easy for all of them. And I tell you what I said to them. When Allah has chosen you to engage in patience and sabr beyond a certain point, it's because he's preparing for you an abode in paradise. That's what it is. The condition is you need to take that patience, bear it. Allah says we recompense those who bear patience unlimited in an unlimited fashion. Subhanallah. That's Allah. So if Allah is telling you he recompenses in an unlimited fashion, that's one verse. There are so many other verses that tell you the same. What does it mean? It means when Allah has chosen you, when Allah has chosen you, he allows you to engage in an act of worship known as sabr, to bear patience. So when you bear that patience, you know what? Your status is elevated. Hence, the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, says, Inna Allah idha ahabba abdan ibtalahu. When Allah loves you, a sign of his love for you is he tests you. So you become closer and closer. I give the example of Jesus, may peace be upon him. Take a look at his life. Read about it. Look at the struggles he faced from the beginning. Look at what he went through, the challenges. Take a look at the prophet Moses, may peace be upon him. What happened to him from the beginning? Before he was born, there was already anxiety about what's going to happen when he is born. Why? Because of the Pharaoh. But those were the chosen ones of Allah. Those were the chosen, the best of the lot. Look at Nabi Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. 
the struggles that he went through, yet he is, as we know, Afdalul Khalqi wa Akramul Rusuli, the most noble, the most honorable, the highest. But look at what Allah did. Those are the messengers that were chosen by Allah. They went through struggles. Do you not think if you go through struggles, it's a bit of uh, what Allah chose for them, that he's giving you the opportunity to go through, so don't become despondent. Their challenges made them stronger in faith. Your challenges are making you weaker in faith. That's the problem. The day your challenges can strengthen you in faith, you have really gained. And it's not like there is going to be a day when you're going to have no challenge. It's just the magnitude of it changes and differs. I always tell people, when you're young, you go to school, you have an examination. It's a very easy test, but for you, it's hard. You ask a child, what's two plus one? And they start doing this. When they do this, you know they're getting it wrong, and then they do that. And then by the time they do this, now you know, oh, wow, they're getting it. And then they tell you five. <laughs> what just happened? It's as simple as anything. Two and one is three, please. You got it right here, but you didn't know the figure. Okay? So now what happens is for you, it's relative because you're older. That's a minor thing. I've been through it. I've learned it. But for them, it's a challenge. It's a massive challenge, my brothers and sisters. They go through it. They think about it and so on. If they were to give up school just because they didn't know all of that, what would happen? We encourage them. They go through more and more as the days pass. And then you get to a point like me, I no longer remember what I learned in algebra. Why? I didn't, I, I learned it just for free. That's what it was. Wasted my brain space, didn't I? No, I didn't. It actually probably expanded my brain to a degree. Mashallah. But what was algebra for, guys, anyway? When they told us X plus Y equals Z, what was that all about? Do you know? Yeah, some of the guys here do know. So it depends what you've specialized in, right? It depends what you've done later on in life. It makes some of what you've learned redundant. It's okay, I don't need to know it anymore. But, but, all of those struggles were such that as you passed one, you went to another level which was more difficult or less difficult? More difficult. You went to another level which was more difficult. You enjoyed it. You worked harder. You, you studied later at night. And you studied harder and you passed and you went to another level and you got a more difficult exam, a, a, a bigger textbook, agreed. And you started studying when I looked at the chemistry of O level and I'm looking at this book this size. I said, this looks like a Bible, man, subhanallah. They said, yes, it's a chemistry Bible. You've got to know everything here. And it was such a big book, but we studied it, subhanallah. And we passed. Got an A, by the way. Ask me about it now, I probably don't know anything. In the same way, when Allah has tested you with minor things, initially they seem major. With each problem, He makes you stronger. So don't give up. With each issue, He's preparing you for something else that's about to come. So don't think it's going to be the end of all. People say, when is this going to end? It's going to end when you meet with Allah with a smile and say, Oh Allah, all these curveballs, mashallah, subhanallah, everything that's come in my direction, it was so difficult. It was almost impossible. It almost broke me. But with your help, I'm here today. Mashallah, saying alhamdulillah. We all are. There are things that have happened in all our lives that almost broke every single one of us. And nowadays, the younger ones are going through challenges that are unbelievable. And they tell you, I'm suicidal. How old are you, son? Nine years old. So you haven't even seen the world, you're suicidal. Imagine if you see a fraction of it, subhanallah. May Allah Almighty help our children. Wallahi, we're living in an age that's very challenging. Very ch So much is happening. They're exposed to so many things. So when you have a month of Ramadan ahead of you, you prepare for it by connecting with your family as well. You prepare for it by praying together. Well before Ramadan, because that's how you're going to be living together. That's how you're going to be helping each other grow together. You prepare for Ramadan by constantly promising Allah, make promises. And if you've broken a promise, feel guilty. But remember, Allah is forgiving. Feel guilty about it. Look, I made a promise, but unfortunately, I didn't manage it. Astaghfirullah. May Allah forgive me, but I'm promising again here and now. That's how it should work. You make another promise. And the day comes when you start moving closer to Allah. Wallahi, the sweetness. The sweetness that you shall taste when you've left sin for the sake of Allah. 
And when you've adopted what you are supposed to be adopting for the pleasure of Allah, that sweetness is unmatched. I'd rather surrender to the hukum and the rule of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala when he's asked me to pray, when he's asked me to, to worship him alone, when he's asked me to dress in a specific way, when he's asked me to speak in a specific way and whatever else. I'd rather surrender to that and enjoy the purity of my life than to dab myself in everything that is displeasing to him and lose myself. So this is why we say, we face reality out there, many challenges, many challenges, starting with people who will distract you from your faith. And sometimes good people can come to you. I always say, you know, when you, when you have, this is my experience over the years, and I've been around for many years. When you have people who come up to you and only speak bad about others, you know, it says more about them than it does about the people they're speaking about. Yeah, I mean... Subhanallah, say something constructive, benefit the people, help them in one way or another, empower them, say good things, and let them learn, help them leave their bad habits instead of talking about others. There was a scholar recently who said, if someone has counted your faults, thank Allah, it means you're a brilliant person because your faults are only counted. That's it. This guy's like this, like this, like this, and like this. What else? Well, that's about it. Four things. Thank you. <laughs> Subhanallah, have you thought of it that way? When people start saying you are like this and you are like that and you are like that, say what else? They say, think hard. Anything else? You are like that? Anything else? I think maybe you are like that. Are you sure there's nothing else? No, nothing else. Then I'm a brilliant person. There's 500 nice things and there's five things you counted that are maybe negative. If we really said that was right. How can we cancel someone completely and totally? Simply because there's one or two things we may have disagreed with them. In our families, one of the greatest acts of worship is to resolve family matters and problems. We are quick to cut our brothers, our sisters, our children, sometimes our in-laws and outlaws. We quick to cut them. Chopped. They were in-laws, now they are outlaws. You notice? And we cut them up. I don't want to talk to you. Why? Because over one small thing, little misunderstand. Don't allow shaitan to do that to you. And that's why when people come gossiping, just stop them there and then. It's okay. I don't need to know. It's fine. It's, this world is very temporary. Have a clean heart. Have a good heart. And you know what? Yes, we, we don't want to be bitten by others, but a few words here and there. It happens to everyone. Learn to solve problems. Talk to people. Discuss. It's not easy to sit and to discuss. People might shout. Today someone called me and said, would you be able to speak to so and so because we have an issue and I think you can resolve it. I said, you know what? I'll try. They said, they might swear you. I said, I don't mind being sworn at. You know why? What Allah has given me is not going to be reduced because of your swear word. And what Allah has taken away from me is not going to be given because of your praise. It's not. You see? It's okay. You can say what you want. If I'm going to try, I'm going to try. I invite you, my brothers, my sisters, to resolve your family matters, be it with your spouse. Take off the gloves, speak the truth. Say your heart, your mind, let it be. Say it again, speak again, solve your problems. Because it's a great act of worship. Allah mentions it in the Quran, that the, a reward you get that is great, one of the things is to resolve matters between disputes between people, especially family. So my brothers and sisters, I ask Allah to open our doors. I ask Allah to grant us goodness. I pray that this Ramadan that is about to come, we prepare for it from now. When we say so many days remaining, it is only to remind us, you know what? Prepare. You need to amass goodness so that when you get to Ramadan, you have a softened heart. And inshallah, you can plan your Umrah trip. It's going to be perhaps Easter. When Ramadan comes in, you're going to have holidays planned from now. You can book from now if you want, inshallah, by the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Because when I say Easter, I'm not trying to tell you that you're going to be celebrating the Easter. Please, please. I'm only saying it's going to be a holiday in most parts of the world. That's all I'm saying. You know, the last time when I said, hey, we're going to be having light upon light during Christmas, they went crazy. <laughs> they went mad. They almost thought that I had a white beard with a red hat. Come on, guys. <laughs> Luckily, mine is black. So my brothers and sisters, prepare in a beautiful way. And Allah Almighty will grant us elevation. Allah Almighty will open our doors. I really, 
am so thankful that Allah gave us the opportunity to meet this evening and I ask Allah to accept from us this in a way that we can change our lives even one millimeter tonight. May Allah forgive us. May Allah strengthen all of us. Say Ameen. May Allah help us quit the sins that we are trying hard to quit and inshallah we will quit them. May Allah Almighty strengthen us so that we can do good deeds right until the day we meet with Allah. Aqulu qawli hadha wa sallallahu wa sallama ala nabina Muhammad.